All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and uh, welcome to the uh, next uh, webinar in the series of AutoCAD uh, webinars here. Uh, my name is David Pothier and I'm uh, working in uh, product support. And uh, with me today we have uh, Volker Coco and Victoria Studley who will be doing the presentation uh, showing you uh, some of these great new features that are in AutoCAD and in AutoCAD LT. And I also have uh, Sarah Emsley, one of our newer uh, hires, uh, going to be helping out with uh, answering questions along with uh, Nauman, uh, uh, expert elite, uh, and we'd love to have him here. So before we get started, I just want to do a couple of quick polls and then we'll turn it over for the presentation. So. The first thing we want to do is just uh, find out if this is your first uh, time to one of these webinars or not. And it's looking like uh, about a third of our, our new people and two-thirds have been here before, so that's great. All right, so I'll go ahead and close that one. And just a couple other quick questions. Um, since this is a presentation on AutoCAD uh, 2016, wondering uh, what your plans are for uh, when you plan to upgrade, or, or if you're not, you know, if you're going to be upgrading to 2016. And it looks like a lot of people already have upgraded, almost half. And dropping maybe 40 percent. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. And then uh, one more quick question, and uh, just want to know uh, if you, you're a member of Augie, the Autodesk User Group International. Uh, if you're not familiar with what Augie is, um, since we have a, you know, a lot of input from Augie on to what goes into the the product in each release, and looks like roughly 40% are members of Augie, and. Fifteen have never heard of Augie before, so <laughs> well that's great. If you if you're not familiar with Augie, it's it's a good thing to check into. This they often have uh, meetings uh, in in different locations around the country and uh, get some great information from them. So uh, I'll go ahead and close that one, and with that we'll turn it back over to uh, Volker and let the presentation get started. All right, thanks a lot, Dave. Really appreciate that, and. Um, uh, yeah, in regards to Augie, uh, the reason we threw that poll in is because three of the uh, features that um, have been implemented uh, were in the top ten of the Augie wish list, if you're familiar with that. If you aren't familiar with Augie, well, um, there is a link on the uh, slide deck that will be available for download later. I'd encourage you to check it out. A lot of good learning resources there. Uh, a lot of good people who are willing to help out. Uh, it's a, a, a bit more enclosed community than the Autodesk discussion groups. Um, both work hand in hand, I feel. Uh, a lot of good stuff there. All right, so, uh, okay, I meant to take that little transition out, but uh, <laughs> getting carried away with the PowerPoint. So, we're going to talk about Autodesk. AutoCAD LT 2016 today. For those who have been here, you know that we need to do a little housekeeping here. So uh, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. Sarah, Dave, myself, Victoria will be answering those uh, chat questions. Now, this session will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube uh, location playlist. Uh, you will also have the slide deck and a data set that you can work with, which you can download after the webinar. Uh, that link will also be made available in the post-webinar survey, or you can grab it on our landing page, which uh, you'll see the image right there. Uh, the image itself is not that updated, but close. Okay, that is the URL for that. You can leave questions after the presentation. We're going to hang around a bit and try and answer as many of those as we can. 
After the webinar, if you'd like to, you can go ahead and leave some feedback about the current webinar, any future ideas, or whatever feedback you may have on our landing page, or email it to that address right there, autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Please put in there, build your AutoCAD IQ, and uh, do use that email address as opposed to our names. Uh, it will get to everybody in our webinar teams and the Build Your AutoCAD IQ is important because we have numerous types of webinars nowadays. So our last webinar was Tips and Tricks Part 2. Um, you'll see we're on webinar 30 today and you can find these other webinars on our YouTube playlist Build Your AutoCAD IQ. So I encourage you to check those out. Some important things here um, on our Autodesk Knowledge Network. We recently did a server-side um, upgrade to um, avoid problems with the Poodle security, uh, secure socket uh, layer um, uh, vulnerability. And you may experience some problems with your Autodesk uh, single sign-on. Um, as well as the AutoCAD single sign-on. So any t if you're having problems getting into your Autodesk account, if you're having some license problems and you get a error message about network connectivity, uh, chances are that you will need one or both of these hotfixes depending on what uh, application you're working with. doesn't affect 2016. I think for the most part it doesn't affect 2015 too much, but there, there's a readme doc as to what it does affect. So be aware of those, and if you've had those problems, this is where you can go to resolve that. Also, because of the new AutoCAD release, I've posted links here, uh, as I did last week, for installation uh, assistance on our Autodesk Net Knowledge Network. Uh, so uh, check out those links as well, as well as any other hot fixes or service packs and downloads which are available on the quick links um, or uh, download section of the Knowledge Network. All right, having said that, let's get on to the real stuff, the meat and potato. Um, so, we're going to show some new features here that are specific to both AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD. So a lot of that is in the user interface, uh, interface, um, face, my list, my auto lisp got really bad there. Um, we will talk about some of the new documentation features as well, uh, some very cool stuff there. Uh, great enhancements to the PDF uh, output uh, for both PDF export publishing uh, and as well as quality and the things we can now do with the uh, PDFs after they've been published. Uh, some cool features for annotation, dimensioning and the mText editor. And then some neat features for drawing and editing as well. And finally, we'll get a little bit geeky. Um, talking about some of the installation and configuration tools, basically system variables that may affect you, um, some built-in monitoring tools that have been implemented, very cool stuff there. And having done that, Victoria is going to go ahead and she will start us off as soon as I get her going here. There we go. Victoria, I hope you're ready to show a bit of AutoCAD. I am ready. Uh, can you see my screen? I can. Excellent. All right. Uh, today I will be talking about the user interface, documentation, and PDF enhancements in AutoCAD 2016. Um, let's start with uh, this learn page right here. Um, the learn page has been enhanced a little bit um, you'll recognize these uh, learning tips over here on the, the upper right. Um, these will now update every 24 hours, and if you want to see more than just the one for today, you can actually toggle through um, from tip to tip um, by using the left and right arrows here, and it'll show you other tips um, on demand. Uh, it also now supports inline images, but I 
Ah, there it is. Uh, I was looking for one here. Um, so now, if the tip involves an image, you'll be able to see it right there uh, within that box. So let's uh, let's pop back over here to the Create tab, and you'll recognize this all from um, 2015. And let's start a new drawing. And the first thing here that you'll notice is that the Start tab, uh, this used to be called a New tab. Uh, it's been renamed Start tab. And there was a system variable to turn this on and off um, called New tab Mode, and that has been renamed to Start Mode. So if we type that in, I'm going to hit F1 to bring up the help documentation on that. And it'll tell you right here, uh, zero, we'll switch this um, off, and one switches it back on. And basically, if you set it to zero, the next time you launch AutoCAD, it'll just launch you right into a, uh, a drawing tab instead of showing you that start tab. So, all right. After that, um, oh, uh, additionally, if, um, if you're creating a deployment for multiple machines, there's an option within, a new option within the deployment uh, setup to turn that on or off um, before the installation uh, so you don't have to go through and do that to every single install uh, you're working with. So after this, um, let's say you've got a bunch of tabs open and uh, I'll open one more here. And you want to get back to that Start tab um, say you want to find a tip or you want to start a new drawing with a different template, there's a new variable here uh, called go to start and it'll pop you back over to this start menu here. Um, you can also use the keyboard shortcut control home and that should bring you over there as well. It's not working for me. Okay. All right. I will. Uh, I'll move on there. Um, so let's say you have several drawings open and you'd like to close everything except for your current drawing. There's now a new command called close all other, and this will close everything except for the current drawing that you're in. Okay. So moving on to layouts. Um, down here in the, uh, the layout tabs, uh, this functionality changed a little bit in 2015, and um, it, there were some growing pains with the uh, additional tabs, so I'm, I'm going to just keep creating new ones until I get to the end here, if you'll bear with me for a second. Sorry about that awkward moment. <laughs> Okay, so now I have several layouts, and uh, let's say that I wanted to take layout three and bring it all the way to the end here. Um, in 2015, this was really difficult if, um, if you had these extra tabs uh, that overflowed into, say I've got 21 here, but I'm only showing 19 on the start uh, bar here. So now you can click and drag these. Come on. Uh, you can click and drag this down to the end, and it'll show you the three little ellipses. And you can place this anywhere you'd like, down the end there. Um, same thing works in reverse. If you wanted to take uh, 21, for example, drag it all the way back to the beginning. You just drag it past the ellipse, and you'll see all the layouts pop in here, and place it there. Okay. Uh, this also works for copying. Um, so if you're uh, if you're trying to copy this layout, um, if you hold down Control and click, it will create a copy now. Um, this disappeared in 2015, and there were a lot of people uh, who asked to have it back. So uh, there it is. Control click and drag to copy the layout tabs. Okay, um, here's our status bar right down here. Um, this was condensed uh, all into one 
neat little area in 2015, and there are a couple of things that were added in 2016. Um, for instance, the lock UI uh, icon is back, and where did we go? There it is, and it's been enhanced. So with lock UI, you used to have to come in to this drop-down menu, and if you wanted floating toolbars and panels and dock toolbars and panels, um, floating windows and docked windows all to be locked, you would have to come in and select them one at a time and reopen the flyout menu, click the next one, and so on and so forth. Uh, they've now enabled um, multi-clicking in here, so you can check and uncheck as many as you want without having to reopen that flyout menu. Okay. Um, where are we? Oh, here it is. Uh, isolate objects was also added in 2016. Uh, that was missing from the status bar. And where are we? Ah, okay. This is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything on here. Um, and this, uh, if you turn everything in the status bar on, it gets a little lengthy. So um, if you work with a um, with a shorter screen here. If you drag the screen to the side and there's not enough space to fit everything on one line, the status bar will wrap onto a second line. I'm trying to force it to do this for me here. Come on. Let me try it in a new drawing. There we go. My layout tabs are in the way there. Okay, so here we go. And um, you won't see the changes until you let go of the mouse. So if I'm dragging this and not uh, letting go of the mouse button, uh, it's just going to keep the same icons on the top and the bottom. But as soon as you let go, uh, they'll jump up to the second line or back down to the first, depending on the width of your screen there. And I'll pull that all the way back out. Okay, where are we now? Oh, okay, uh, ribbon galleries. So um, I'm going to jump over here to this uh, insert tab. Uh, there's this new uh, there's this new option that's um, been included with AutoCAD 2016 called Gallery View, and I'm going to turn that off for a second and show you what the old functionality looked like. Uh, when you go to insert a block, where are we? You would see this um, traditional block uh, insert dialog box. Uh, in 2016, you'll now see, if we turn gallery view back on, that's setting it to one, and we click on insert, oh, no, Gallery view. Hmm. Okay, this should be showing me my uh, my block library. Nope. Okay, I'm going to try a different. Uh... Here we go. Okay, it's working for the dimension styles. Awkward. Um, Awkward, huh? That is an awkward moment. This was working last night for me. Um, yeah, so, it, <laughs> so what we're going to see... <laughs> thanks, Volker. Um, is contagious. Yeah, I am. I am. I wanna, yeah. just want to interrupt for a moment on that one. Um, sure. One of the reasons the uh, gallery view system variable is there is because um, we did have um, uh, input about that with... Uh, drawings which have a lot of blocks in them, for example, um, when trying to insert the block because it had to show those blocks in the gallery view, it would kind of bog you down a little bit. So if you're working with uh, a very large drawing that has numerous blocks in it, um, and uh, every time you insert that block, it takes a moment for things to pop up, uh, turn it off. Turn gallery, gallery view off and... Uh, improve performance, gives in height. All right, uh, sorry about that. I'll let you go. No, that's fine. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm glad for the commentary. Um, 
So let's, uh, I, I can at least demonstrate it with the um, dimension styles. So you'll see here, um, if you scroll through, I'm trying to expand this a little bit. Oh, I guess I only have two dimension styles in here. Um, here we go. Uh, multi-leader styles and table styles all, um, all have this uh, new gallery view enabled. And if um, you turn gallery view off, then these turn into just standard lists uh, as you would normally see them. Okay. Oh, all right, let's talk about the help. All right, up here uh, in the info center, um, we're gonna jump into our help. Um, and you'll notice in 2016, uh, you'll be logged in to A360. So if you log in um, out here in your info center bar, I'm already logged in. Um, log into your Autodesk account, uh, A360, and it will link up with your help. And now um, I'm gonna grab one of these that I haven't been to yet, um, temporary override key reference. You'll see this like button up here. Um, and if you're logged in, you can click like and it will remember which help articles you've liked. All right. So there's also an enhanced uh, find feature within the help. Um, so I searched for the purge command here and let's say I don't know where that is uh, within the user interface. I can click on this find button and it'll actually open up the application menu and point to the purge command uh, where I can find that. Makes it a little bit easier to navigate um, the uh, application menu, um, the status bar. Am I missing any? I think it's the application menu, the status bar, the ribbon. I thought there was a fourth place. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, there's several comments in the uh, in the questions section that says uh, maybe you don't have any drawing uh, blocks defined in your drawing, which is why that wasn't working for the insert. I I might not. Yeah. Hmm. That's actually a good point. I can go back and try it. Let me. Um, oh. You know what? This is a really awkward moment. I don't have the sheet set open. All right, while I, um, come on, there we go. Hmm, here we go. Okay, ribbon galleries. And I'll wait for that to go. Um, All right, well, I'm waiting for that to open. I'll grab my help again. Uh, okay. All right, back into the help. Uh, let's take a look at graphics performance. I'm just going to demonstrate where we can find, there we go. Uh, this right here will show you where things are on the status bar as well. And then that's what it was. The uh, quick access toolbar is another one of the ones that, uh, where are we? Performance tuning. Oh, I can't find it. There it is. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having a little, uh, a little moment here. Um, okay. It doesn't want to point to my quick access toolbar. I'm going to close the help. All right, let's move on to documentation. So in here, I'm going to open this revision clouds drawing. Okay. 
and under here there's this um, revision cloud tool which you may or may not be um, familiar with and if we come over here uh, there's now the option to create a rectangular uh, polygonal or freehand um, uh, revision cloud in addition to uh, the option to turn an object into a revision cloud um, so I'll just demonstrate that uh, rectangular one here. Nope. Come on. Why? Ah, here we go. Okay. All right. So that's the rectangular one, we've got a polygonal revision cloud, so if you wanted to there we go um, okay, we'll leave the freehand alone um, the command for this at the command line is revcloud so let's enter into revcloud and the default for this is to select an object, which you'll see right here. So I'm going to press enter to accept that and grab this circular um, object here, and it creates a circular rev cloud. Okay, so then uh, one of the other enhancements here is that all of the rev clouds now come with grips and so you can move these and depending on which object or uh, which creation method you used uh, will determine the type of grips that are uh, available so for instance this one was rectangular so I see these endpoint grips and these uh, and the center grips here um, to uh, modify that um, that rev cloud. Uh, this circular one here will have the four quadrants. So if I wanted to tuck this in, I can grab it by the quadrant, or if I wanted to move it, I can move it by that center point on the circle. Uh, one last thing about rev clouds is um, this was actually the number four Augie wish list request um, that was added for 2016. And uh, it's the ability to modify a revision cloud. So this here, um, let's type in rev cloud. Um, once you're in the rev cloud command, there's this option here, M for modify. And then I'm just going to select which rev cloud I want to modify. Uh, and I selected it around the area that I, I want to uh, add onto it. So let's say that I want to uh, widen this a little bit, include here, and come back over to this point here. Um, once you complete the um, the new geometry in the rev cloud, you'll be prompted to erase uh, a portion of the rev cloud. So depending on whether you want to uh, delete this external portion or um, what I'm going to do in this case is delete the interior portion here, and then accept and Here's your new rev cloud. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about that one. I know I've I've been very frustrated by rev clouds in the past, so I'm excited to see this one improve yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that and the fact that you don't have numerous grips when you select one of the clouds, so you can just modify it using, you know, the vertice of a uh, of a polyline object. That's I like those yeah, features. It's a, so, it's a little Thank more you. intuitive, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, for my last segment here, uh, PDF enhancements. Um, first, what I'm going to do is open a different sheet set. Uh, recent. There we go. All right, I'm just going to open the title sheet for this IRD edition um, project here. And I'm going to show you a few 
uh, a few features within AutoCAD, and then we're going to open up a PDF and see what it looks like on the output side as well. Um, so one of the first things that you'll notice about um, the PDF enhancements in 2016 is that the underlays, uh, the PDF underlays, should be a little faster um, when you're zooming and panning around them. Um, so the performance and the, the quality of these um, PDFs sh have, have been uh, improved upon. So, all right, let's go up to the output ribbon here. And we're going to take a look at, oh, where are we? Uh, there we are, DWF and PDF options right here. Okay. So these export to PDF options. Um, what you'll notice here is that you can now include hyperlinks and create bookmarks uh, in your PDFs, and um, there's uh, additional font handling added in um, to capture the fonts that you're using within your drawing. All right. Okay, so these, there we go. If I select this, where are we? Uh, it's not displaying it for me. I'll just open it up in the properties palette here. Um, what I'm trying to show you is that this right here, there we are, uh, it's got a hyperlink added to it, uh, which should take you out to that particular website. Um, and then if you mouse over this one here, it's not showing me that one either. That one doesn't have hyperlink in it. Um, there are a couple of them in here. Here we go. Here's one. Uh, this one right here, the A01, uh, actually links to something else within the sheet set. And we'll demonstrate how this works too. It's going to jump you right to that um, particular sheet uh, within the sheet set when you click on that in the PDF. OK. Close this out and go into plot here. Okay, so from here what you'll notice is that um, we've added a couple of PDF um, print configurations. So there's a general documentation one, high quality print, smallest file, web and mobile. Uh, I'm just going to select this uh, general documentation uh, setup here and jump into PDF options. And you'll see that you can um, also control, include hyperlinks, create bookmarks, and capture fonts in here as well. Okay. Um, additionally, you can do this, you can control this from batch plot, and you can also control this from, um, from your DWF options. Um, Okay, oh, where are we? Okay, so from here you would select PDF or DWF if you wanted. Um, this will show you your different PDF presets right through here. And here are your publish options, and here are those uh, options again. Okay, I'm just going to cancel out of that. Okay, so let's take a look at that PDF now. Um, oh, you know what, one more thing back in AutoCAD. Uh, let me show you that, what that sheet set looks like here. Um, so from here you'll see all these different sheets uh, within the project. This is what's going to get published out to your PDF uh, when you use that publish option. And um, if you look at the sheet view, it shows you all of these different drawing views that are within the sheet set. And these are what you can link to. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that now in the PDF. All right, so here's our PDF, and you'll recognize this International Road Dynamics uh, text. And if you look at that, as I mouse over it, you can see it displays that link. And if I click on that link, okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and allow that so that we can go to the actual website here that we linked to IRD, INC. 
uh, com. And there we go, the International Road Dynamics. There's the website right there. And I'll just minimize that, come back into the PDF. Okay. There's a comment list here, and if we expand the comment list, this is searchable. So once it populates, it takes a second because a lot of comments in the PDF, but it's not too long. So let's take a look, and we will search for uh, formwork. And this will find all instances of formwork within the, uh, within the sheet set here. So if we scroll down, click on one of these, it'll actually jump to, you'll see this jump to the sheet that, um, that's on, and it highlights the text where that, um, here, I'll zoom in on it a little bit, it highlights the text area where um, that instance of formwork occurs. All right, let me zoom back out. All right, if we look at the page thumbnails over here, um, you'll notice that all the titles of the sheets that were in Sheet Set Manager are now listed underneath the, um, the thumbnails, uh, making it a little bit easier to navigate. And then if we go to the bookmarks here, this is really cool. Um, the sheets, uh, the sheet names are in here, uh, but then underneath them, uh, there's a bookmark for each one of these drawing views, and it'll jump you right to those drawing views as you click on them. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to show you, I'm gonna go back to the title sheet for this, and let's say you're looking at your sheet index here, and you wanna find the main floor plan, second floor plan, and wall type notes. This is that a01 link that we looked at earlier. I'm just going to click on that and we'll jump right to this page, um, A01 right here. And uh, there's our main floor and second floor. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, what do you think, Volker? Oh, I like that. And I think a lot of people have been asking for this type of functionality and uh, the different um, plot uh, printer drivers are. PDF drivers, uh, some real nice preset definitions there, depending on what kind of quality you want. Uh, but the ability to just walk through your Adobe PDF uh, document like this to quickly get from point A to point B to be able to search text uh, to edit uh, yeah. the document. Very cool this features. Sounds, this would have come in really handy working on larger buildings. Yeah, <laughs> where was it here. when I was drafting? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this a lot. I think it's uh, I think it's a really good addition. Very. I, this is my this is my favorite feature of yeah. 2016 so far. So. Well, I am going to be showing mine in a few moments here. Um, All right. Um, I good would stuff. Say, uh, take take back the screen. Okay. <laughs> I will I will I will do that then. All right. Okay. Thank right, thank you. All right. So here we are, and I'm going to make sure to uh, show my AutoCAD here, hopefully. Uh, it'll refresh. There it is. Everybody see it okay? Um, I know not everyone can answer. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. So um, I've got a few things to show. I know we're running a little short on time, but we'll squeeze it all in, and then we'll hang out a bit and uh, see about answering some questions for you here. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about are some of the uh, some of the new functionality we have with dimensions, and um, actually I forget what number it is on the Augie wish list, um, but there is a really neat feature for dimensions. Up, so let me go ahead and open up the proper sheet set that I have set up. Uh, yeah, I'm working with uh, somebody else's demo set, so. Uh, You've all seen me experience awkward moments. Um, you'll probably see a lot of them here, okay? Um, but that being said, um, 
some of the new features under uh, dimensions, right away for dimensions, you'll notice one big difference on the annotate tab, which is that we now have a second draw, drop down list here, or drop down control. And this is uh, not your typical layer drop down control, this is for dimensions specifically. We can now create a layer on the fly for a dimension. And when you go into the dim command, it will automatically place that dimension on that layer. So the way we do this is through a command called dim layer. So right now, let me just show, uh, these are the existing layers right now. And I'm actually gonna go to the home tab. I'll go ahead and add this to my quick access bar. And of course, all our layers right here as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and create a layer using dim layer. And I'll go ahead and call this a dash dim. <laughs> dim. All right, and hit enter and it prompts me, hey, do you wanna use that uh, either the current layer or a dash dim? Well, that's what I wanna use for dimensions. All right. The second coolest thing about this is the functionality within the dimension tool itself. Um, we no longer have to really spend a lot of time picking and choosing. Notice there's no fly out here as there was in the past. Uh, right now, all of the different types of dimensions we have, uh, the majority of them anyway, are within one command. Angular, baseline, continue, ordinate, etc. here on the command line. And they are a lot more intelligent as well. So if I um, say scroll down here to the side, I'm in the dim command. And let's just get near this vertical wall. As I hover over that wall, it knows right away that I need a vertical linear dimension. And I pick, drag and drop. Go down, I'm still in the dimension command right now, by the way. Usually we'd be done with it, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, let me turn off my old snaps. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit, just so you can see this better. Now it knows I need a linear uh, horizontal dimension. That's what I want. I pick drag and drop. Again, I'm still in the dimension command, and I could have overridden that. You know, what if I didn't want that, but if I wanted a different type of uh, dimension command? Let's uh, take a look, in fact, over here. We have a circle, and we have an arc within that as well. And notice what's happening as my crosshair goes over circle or an arc. Okay, and actually I'm gonna turn off my, um, dynamic input, just because it seems to get in the way right here. All right, so while I'm here uh, for the circle itself, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick like I would, and it allows me to place that dim uh, dimension right now if I wanted to, but let's say I want a radial dimension. I right mouse clicked, or I could have selected off of the command line, radius, and it, allows me to change it on the fly. What a time saver right there. And I could also choose to modify things like the text, the text angle itself, um, uh, and depending on what type of dimension you're in, uh, you could have different uh, options available to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a radial. I picked, I'm still in the dimension command. I'll go over here to the arc. And let's go ahead and just choose radius just for grins here. Whoops. There we go. And it allows me to place that radial, radial uh, dimension. So here's a cool one right here. If uh, still in the dimension command, I'm going to go ahead and pick on this uh, linear object as if I were wanting to place a horizontal linear dimension. But I don't. I'm gonna go over here to the angled dimension and I'm gonna pick and it allows me to quickly place an angular dimension. And what a time saver this is. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, there's still stuff I'm learning about all the functionality within the dimension command. But 
it is a lot faster now, a lot easier. And uh, actually, I'm going to get out of this command for a moment and uh, turn off. Yeah, let's turn off some of this stuff. I don't really want the doors right now. Whoops, I wanted that on. Let's go. All right, good, good awkward moment there. And let me just go to uh, layer. Uh, never can find it up there for myself. Lay previous. Actually, we're right where we want me to be. Awkward moment. Sorry, guys. All right, so here, let's just continue with this real quick so I don't waste any more of your time. I'm going to go ahead and place a couple of dimensions here. Uh, we'll, we'll just use these uh, pick points right here and uh, have my old snaps off. So I do need them on for this one. Pick, pick, and I'll go ahead and place that. And I'm in dimension command so I'm going to go continue instead of it doing stuff on its own it prompts me to quickly select where I want to start and I'll go ahead and just pick right there and since I have that I'm now going to go ahead and enter to finish this portion here enter again keeps me in the dim command and this time, I'll go ahead and choose Baseline. I could right-click as well. And instead of just starting where I left off, as we have seen in the past, it allows me to pick my starting point and then plop my dimension in place. Now I'll go ahead and hit Enter a few times to get out of this command. I've quickly placed some dimensions. I'm on the Home tab right now. We know that if we select an object, it tells us what layer it's on. Look at that. It placed it on the layer that I created on the fly. Now, the only thing I think my wish list item here is that I would uh, let it allow me to create a color for that layer on the fly as well. Uh, it doesn't, but I'm just going to go here and let's just go ahead for grins quickly assign a color and you'll see that all my dimensions are on the proper layer. So I feel that is a very sweet feature. Okay, next up, let's take a look at another piece of um, just one little enhancement really made for the, uh, um, but this is actually uh, a wish list or Augie wish list request as well. And I'm going to select this. Whoops. Let's go ahead and select my text. Yeah. Let's go into a text drawing. How's that? Yeah. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and select this. There's a new functionality found in the properties palette. Look at that. Text, whoops, text frame. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose yes. And now I have some nicely framed text. So this has been oft uh, requested by uh, end users. It was the Augie number five wish list item. So uh, very cool stuff there. All right, the next example I'm going to show you, I'm not going to use one of these data sets. Sorry, uh, I didn't like the way that was put together. And since this is my present portion of the presentation, I'm going to do it my way, the Volker way. All right, um, just quickly, I'm going to go ahead and uh, place a rectangle here. And let's go ahead and just create another rectangle. This function here actually got me really excited. I think you're all, those who have been to these webinars are familiar with the fact that I am, I love system variables such as Osmode. Okay, so in the past, I'd have to draw construction lines or use OTRAC to say place a circle within the rectangle, right? I've shown this to you. I'm kind of bummed because I don't get to show this anymore. Not with 2016. All I have to do nowadays is change to a system variable 
called Geometric Center. Okay, and I'm just going to go in here. It is right here, underneath between Center and Node. The uh, Osmode system variable bit code is 1024. Yes, I've had to change them. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, clear all and turn this on just so we don't have any interference. And I'm going to type C for circle. And as I bring it here, notice the um, the new glyph that we have uh, for geometric center, and it allows me to place that. I'm also going to go ahead and select this right here. I'm going to use the move command. It selects the geometric center, and I'm going to move it over here to the geometric center. Uh, so it, as long as you have a closed polyline, you can go from center of that or centroid uh, to the center of something else or to an endpoint, whatever. Uh, very cool functionality. This is one of my favorite features in this new release. I know it doesn't mean much, but um, it's powerful for when you need it. So some other items that I'm going to go to one of the big ones now in case we um, run out of time. So kind of ad-libbing where I have all my awkward moments. Uh, we're going to take a look at XREF overrides. In the past, if you've made changes to layer properties in, uh, for an XREF, uh, well, first of all, uh, we couldn't do it in the property palette. Um, it would show us all the XREF layer names, but we couldn't really make any modifications. In this release, the property pa uh, layers for XREFs are no longer shown in the property palette. Going to layer properties, if I wanted to change, say, the color of uh, an XREF layer, and so here we'll show all of them, but if I go here and I select these, and let's say we use something like, um, I'm going to use just something that will stand out a little bit, hopefully. Let's make it green and click OK. All right. so. I, I chose every single layer for that XREF, but some of these did not update, and that's because they have the uh, color assigned to them by object, right? What did change was anything that was set to color by layer. So we have this system variable now called XREF overrides, okay, override. When I change that from the def uh, default of one, uh, zero to one, it overrides the by object properties of an XREF temporarily in this drawing to a by layer functionality, basically. So, which allows me to override those properties uh, of that XREF to have them uh, presented as I want them to be represented in my drawing. And this doesn't just apply to uh, the color. It can also apply to, oops, I don't want the dim command. Uh, I can also say apply to my um, transparency. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and change this to maybe 50%. And I can also change, notice the change here. And I'm also going to go ahead and maybe change the uh, line weight. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and change that to something pretty darn, yeah, it's not going to be that ugly, but this may be. Go ahead and click that, and you'll see that the uh, line weight has increased a bit. Hey, it actually shows it better at about one, okay? But um, any of these properties in the layer dialog are now updated using this XREF override, and if we go ahead and change this back to, uh, what was it, zero? Oh, God, good grief. Let's go, XREF over, right? There we go, zero, enter. Everything appears more normal. So a very cool feature here in AutoCAD 2016. There's some other um, small features. Looks like we're going to run a little bit out of time. Um, uh, things like uh, 
object properties and uh, selection preview, those are all in the uh, data set and script that we're going to post, so you can check those out yourself, and we'll actually review some of those that we left out in our next session, okay? So just because we ran out of time doesn't mean we won't show it to you. We will next week. Let me talk about some system variables real quick. I know we only have five minutes left. You've probably allocated only an hour. I apologize for that, but we'll answer questions afterwards. Hang out. Um, first of all, a very cool feature here is what's called the system variable monitor. And again, I'll, I'll go over this in uh, a little bit more detail when we uh, sysvar monitor. That's what I was typing wrong. When we go into um, next week's session, this will notify you of any system variables. You can add changes. So you can add to this. It lists all the system variables here that are not read-only. And you can add to this list, but bottom line is, say, let's say we have file DIA here. If I change file DIA to zero, which I probably wouldn't, wouldn't want unless I'm scripting, uh, we get a notification that the variable has changed. So if you open up a drawing where mirror text, for example, is set to not readable, okay, it would notify you, and you'd know that, uh, well, before you did any mirroring functions, that um, you need to change this. So it actually shows you in this monitor, hey, this is the variable affected, this is the preferred, this is the current. The only thing missing here, I think, is the fact that I'd really like to be able to change it here in the current, not just in the preferred. So some very cool functionality there. Um, I think we're going to leave it at that for right now, just so we can answer a couple of questions anyway, and uh, at least do a final poll as well before we answer questions. I uh, didn't realize we were running that uh, far off track. So, yeah, we will do that. Let's run some polls there, the last poll, if you could. Okay, we'll do that real quick. So uh, very simply, you uh, want to know if you learned something new today, and hopefully you all did since we're showing all new features, unless you are uh, one of those people that uh, uh, opens up the beta and studies everything in great detail before the product comes out. And <laughs> <laughs> typically, we still learn things as we're using this. So um, Very true, so very true. Some new things. And so it looks like... Uh, there's one holdout saying that they didn't learn anything, but we're not going to we're not going to believe them. So, uh. <laughs> uh, thanks for that poll. Uh, before you guys yeah. go, uh, uh, for those who don't want to stick around for questions, uh, the PowerPoints that will be made available, and it'll be a couple hours before all of these are available. All right, um, it'll have some additional resources for um, more information on, about new stuff, some stuff about the uh, uh, Autodesk. AutoCAD, excuse me, the AutoCAD User Group International, which is um, uh, an independent organization, by the way. Okay, so we have that. Next week, we're going to have what's new in AutoCAD 2016, which um, will continue from this session, actually. But primarily, it's going to be AutoCAD 2016 stuff, and that will go into the next week after that. Following that, a Modify Commands Back to Basics class, a Beyond the Basics uh, Line types and line type customization is what that one's going to be about. And then we're going to do a, an AutoCAD session on May 7th, which is an introduction to 3D modeling, hosted by Victoria and Steve. So, um, yeah, let's do some questions if we, if we for those who want to hang out. Sure. And um, actually, I'm going to stop the recording, I guess. Yes. All right. So uh, first